welcome to the fourth lecture of week 1 and this lecture is based on terminologies. Whatever terminologies we will consider in designing that we will first discuss that how to select these uh, terminology or these parameters and then we will go for detailed design of the pressure vessel. Okay. So, let us start the terminologies. So, here I am having main terminology which to be used while designing. So, the first one is the maximum working pressure, then design pressure, design temperature and then design stress, corrosion alloyance and weld joint efficiency factor. So, all these terminology we use in designing and therefore, it will be good if we see how these terminology should be selected in designing. So, let us start with the first one which is on maximum working pressure. So, maximum working pressure is the maximum gauge pressure that is permitted for the vessel in operation. Okay. So, maximum working pressure is the maximum operating pressure you can understand and that should be given in gauge and why pressure is considered in gauge that point we will discuss when we will derive the expression for uh, designing of pressure vessel. Okay. But here you should understand what is the maximum working pressure is that pressure which should never increase while operation. So, maximum working pressure is that pressure which is the maximum possible value of pressure which we can face during the operation. Now, if uh, for example, if I say that uh, the system is being operated at 2 mega Newton per meter square and uh, some variation may also be found like 2.1, 2.05 like that. So, the maximum possible value uh, we can observe in the operation that should be considered as maximum working pressure and if it is given in absolute, we should convert that first into gauge uh, before using. So, this pressure limit should never exceed for a vessel during the operation to avoid failure of the vessel. So, failure of the vessel will occur when pressure exceeds the allowable, uh, when the pressure exceeds the um, uh, maximum allowable pressure value and therefore, we need to consider that value as the base for designing and it is determined by the technical requirements of the process. It means for each process we already know what should be the pressure condition, what should be temperature condition, but in that pressure further we will see that how much variation I am observing during the operation because the value will not be fixed at one uh, magnitude only, it will keep on changing. So, what would be the maximum possible pressure that we consider as maximum working pressure. Okay? And the pressure including the static head is used in design calculation of a vessel for purpose of determining the minimum thickness of various component. So, along with operating pressure, we also need to focus on uh, uh, static head, static head I guess you understand for let us say up to certain height liquid is filled and whatever rho g h for that, that we will consider as a static head. So, that should be added to operating pressure to uh, as, and that should be considered while designing also. So, one in uh, one is operating pressure, second is the static head. So, both we need to consider. Now, here in this uh, slide we have a design pressure for a vessel subjected to various pressure conditions. Okay. Now, why we have defined maximum working pressure? Maximum working pressure is the maximum uh, possible value of pressure found or observed in the process. Okay. And then based on that we will calculate the design pressure. Design pressure value should be slightly more than the value we can obtain during working because we need to keep certain uh, safety margin. Okay. So, as far as design is concerned we consider usually value higher than that at which we need to work. Okay. So, here we have this table where case 1 is basically whether vessel under internal pressure. Okay. So, internal pressure is P i. Now, what is the meaning of internal pressure and external pressure? This internal pressure we have already um, discussed in uh, membrane stresses also. Uh, so, basically internal pressure is 
when the pressure inside the equipment is higher than the atmospheric pressure or higher than the outside pressure that we can call as internal pressure condition. If the system is being operated at vacuum, so obviously inner pressure would be lesser than the outside pressure. So, in that case condition would be external pressure. So, this internal as well as external these both are defined based on whichever uh, pressure is higher. Okay. So, case 1 is having a uh, vessel under internal pressure. So, when I am having pressure P i uh, inside the design pressure should be 1.05 into P m work G i. So, 5 percent then this. So, what is this? This is P that is the pressure maximum, maximum operating pressure or uh, work is there. So, maximum working pressure in gauge internal getting. So, considering this uh, whatever internal pressure are there we need to consider that in gauge and then 5 percent extra I have to take as design pressure for case 1. Case 2 says that vessel under internal pressure P i and a static pressure due to liquid head P s t l P s t is nothing but the rho g h. And here we have two cases first is when static head is greater than 5 percent than maximum working gauge pressure. Okay, gauge, gauge pressure is given uh, basically internal pressure and if static head is 5 percent more than that then design pressure should be maximum working gauge internal plus P s t l A static head will be added to maximum working gauge pressure internal. If uh, gauge pressure if static head is less than 5 percent than maximum working gauge, it should be 5 percent extra to maximum working gauge pressure internal. Now, we have case 3 where vessel subjected to inside vacuum and external pressure P e or both. If this is the situation, case 1 is there where P e is equal to P atm that is external pressure E resembling to external. So, P external it will be equal to atmospheric pressure and inside is P vacuum. So, inside uh, if I am having vacuum and outside is atmospheric pressure. So, obviously, atmospheric pressure is more than the vacuum. So, in that case the condition would be of external pressure condition. Okay. So, in that case if P is equal to P vacuum and this vacuum corresponding to vacuum pressure we consider pressure in absolute. So, 1 minus P absolute would be the design pressure. If external pressure is more than atmospheric pressure and vacuum is uh, 0 it means internal pressure is atmospheric, but outside is more than atmospheric. So, in that case we consider pressure as 5 percent extra than maximum working gauge pressure external. And further if I am having the condition like external pressure is greater than atmospheric pressure and P i is uh, equal to vacuum it means uh, outer we have uh, more than atmospheric and inside we have uh, less than atmospheric that is vacuum and that vacuum uh, we consider uh, in absolute and uh, that uh, 1 minus P absolute plus 5 percent extra than maximum working gauge pressure external this would be this whole value we will use for we will consider as design pressure. So, in this way we select uh, uh, design pressure in different conditions. So, this is very important terminology while designing. Now, we have the design temperature. So, what should be the design temperature? Why it is required? It is required to find allowable stress of the material. It is important to find allowable stress of the material of construction. So, we need to choose the material of construction and then we will uh, we have to see the value of allowable stress and allowable stress varies with the uh, temperature. Therefore, it is important to first find out the temperature. So, it is important to find out first the design temperature and then based on that we go for the allowable stress value. What is allowable stress that we will discuss in subsequent slides. So, what should be 
uh, that design temperature, the temperature used in design shall not be less than the metal temperature expected under operating condition for part considered. What is the meaning of this? For example, if the system is being operated let us say at 300 degree Celsius and metal will acquire some of the temperature that may be slightly less than due to the conductivity. Uh, that temperature may be sl uh, slightly less than the uh, operating temperature because of conductivity uh, value. So, but design temperature should not be less than the that temperature let us say 300 is the operating temperature and system is uh, acquiring 290 and 280. So, the temperature we will choose for design should not be less than 280 or 290 as the case may be. And further, in no case shall the temperature at the surface of metal exceeds the maximum temperature listed in the stress table of the material. Okay. So, for each material we have permissible temperature value as you can see from this table for carbon steel and um, uh, other uh, alloys we have maximum permissible temperature that is uh, these values are based on the melting temperature of the material. So, these are the maximum possible values for material to be considered in designing. So, you understand here I am having two limit first is the lower possible lowest possible limit it means whatever temperature metal should observe that uh, temperature at least that temperature we will consider as design temperature or that design temperature should not exceed the maximum permissible temperature defined for that particular material. So, considering these values we have defined lower as well as upper limit of the temperature. And when the occurrence of different metal temperatures during operation can be definitely predicted for different zones of the vessel, the design of different zones may be based on their predicted temperature. What is the meaning of this? For example, uh, different sections, different components of the pressure vessel may have different temperature experience. So, each metal, each uh, component will be defined, will be designed based on respective temperature and then we will consider that uh, uh, as final design of the pressure vessel. And here I am having the table to choose the design temperature for uh, different uh, parts or uh, uh, different condition. The case one should be unheated part. It means uh, uh, heating is not provided, uh, material is available at a particular temperature. In that case, highest temperature of stored material can be taken as design temperature. Further, I am having case 2 which is basically used for body parts heated by means of steam, hot water or similar heating media. Okay. So, if I am, uh, if heating is involved in the system, then highest temperature of heating media uh, that is the maximum possible temperature in the system. So, that we will consider for designing or 10 degree higher than the maximum temperature that any part of the body is likely to attain in course of operation. So, whatever would be higher among these that we will consider as design temperature for case 2. Case 3 is the vessel where direct heating is employed by means of flue gas or severe exothermic reaction. In this case, we have first case when vessel is heated. So, in that case highest temperature of inside material plus 20 degree minimum we need to take as a design temperature. Now, what is the meaning of this shielding? Shielding means when the vessel is insulated in that case highest T inside the material plus 20 degree we will add as the minimum uh, design temperature and if um, vessel is an unshielded or non insulated in that case highest temperature of inside material we need to choose plus 50 degree we need to further add. So, in this way we choose the design temperature, but in no case design temperature should be less than 250 degree Celsius. Um, that is the guideline when temperature is coming less than 250 at least you take value of design temperature as 250 degree Celsius 
and this is because allowable stress value is available values is started from 250 degree Celsius that further we will discuss in detail when we will discuss the allowable stress as a terminology. Now next terminology we have is the design stress. So, let us define this. The maximum stress permissible at the design temperature for any specified material. Okay. So, maximum stress permissible what is the meaning of that? It means when I am operating with any pressure it will create some stress in the material. Okay. So, we should consider maximum possible stress that can be created in the uh, system that we have to consider as a reference point. Okay. Now, if a member is so designed that the maximum stress as calculated for expected condition of service is less than some certain value, the member have a proper margin of security against damage or failure. What is the meaning of that? If member is so designed, member means what? Member means the pressure vessel, the object which we need to design. So, if member is so designed that the stress whatever we are considering in design that should be slightly higher than the maximum permissible stress in the system. Are you getting this? This is the maximum permissible system. This is the maximum permissible stress in the system and we are considering this as a design stress. Okay, we are designing at this level. So, what, what I can say that this much would be or this much difference we can consider as a proper safety margin. So, we, so, failure will not occur in that case. So, this value here I am operating, here I am designing. So, this particular value will be known as design stress or allowable stress. Allowable stress we have discussed many times. Uh, in previous lectures, but here I am defining it. It is slightly higher value of stress than the value at which system is operated. And further you should keep in mind that this allowable stress should be less than the damaging stress. What is the damaging stress? Damaging stress is the stress where failure will occur, where permanent failure will occur. So, allowable stress value would be slightly lower than the damaging stress and I am operating the system at this level. So, this is the um, operating, condi operating condition, this is the design condition and this is the failure condition. So, you have this much safety margin. Okay. So, you can consider here maximum possible stress during the operation. It is less than the design stress or allowable stress and this is further less than the damaging stress. So, here until unless the stress will not reach the damaging stress value, failure will not occur and we are designing the system to sustain slightly lower value of stress. Okay. So, here this is uh, different than the temperature and pressure. In pressure we have maximum pressure value, maximum operating pressure value or working pressure value and we have designed at slightly higher value than that and similar observation we have seen for temperature. But here at which level if it is damaged we will design at this level so that we can consider sufficient safety margin. So, design stress is less than the damaging stress so as to avoid uncertainty to the conditions of the service, non-uniformity of material and inaccuracy of stress analysis. So, considering that uncertainty we have considered design stress uh, lesser than the damaging stress and the ratio of these two will be defined as factor of safety. So, factor of safety or design stress factor will be defined as damaging stress divided by design stress and that should be greater than or equal to 1. So, in this way I choose the design value and here we have uh, if you see here we have allowable stress values for ferrous and non-ferrous material. Here the first column speaks about different material IS stands for Indian standard and here we have different codes for different material these are basically ferrous and non-ferrous material and according to uh, this number and grade material is specified and here we have allowable stress value for different design temperatures. So, you see the minimum value is available at 250 
and therefore design temperature should not be less than 250 and as we keep on moving towards higher temperature you can see value of allowable stress will keep on decreasing okay because when temperature exceeds it is more prone to fail therefore allowable stress value at higher temperature is less than in comparison to that value at lower temperature so you can choose allowable stress value based on such tables now next terminology we will discuss is corrosion alloyance uh, corrosion alloyance i guess uh, you understand that represents all type of damages occurring in the metal sheet that collectively called as corrosion alloyance so whenever the word corrosion is used in the code it shall be taken to mean corrosion oxidation scaling erosion and all other forms of wasted what is the meaning of corrosion uh, when a system is being uh, operated with the fluid uh, so continuous contact of fluid and metal takes place so it gives uh, it makes some reaction with the metal surface and uh, that um, a re reacted material that material is deposited on the surface of the vessel and that is called as corrosion what is oxidation when uh, it is uh, when metal is coming into contact of the moisture or water it reacts with that to uh, to make the rust to make uh, the ferrous oxide to make the iron oxide and that we call as oxidation uh, next we have the scaling what is a scaling a scaling uh, is also called as fouling where material deposited over the surface of the metal now why it happens because usually uh, we have observed that solubility of the component in a solution increases when the temperature increases okay but there are certain uh, components like calcium ion magnesium ion all these components have the tendency that after certain temperature instead of increasing solubility solubility will keep on decreasing with the increasing tem temperature so once solubility will keep on decreasing uh, they form lumps and they deposit it over the surface of the metal and that uh, forms a scale or that foul the system next uh, uh, we have the term erosion erosion means after continuous operation when uh, uh, higher velocity fluid pass through a metal sheet continuously then some of the metal part will uh, mix with the uh, solution and it will move with the solution so it means uh, removal of material uh, from the metal surface is basically called as erosion so all these type of wastage we have considered in single term and that term is basically corrosion alloyance which we will use in designing so here you see all these uh, factors we have already discussed to define the corrosion alloyance now additional thickness to allow for corrosion why this additional thickness is required because when we design a system okay that you must have seen in membrane stress uh, expression and you will see further in subsequent lectures also that whatever thickness we calculate from the expression that is the minimum possible thickness it means to withstand that pressure that much thickness is required and that thickness should remain as it is throughout the life of the vessel however when we consider corrosion and other type of wastage after continuous operation metal becomes weak so we need some additional thickness to the thickness which we have considered from the expression and that additional thickness is called as corrosion alloyance because after continuous operation if damage will occur damage will occur only that particular thickness which we have added to the corrosion and whatever is required for operation to carry out that is the minimum possible thickness it will remain as it is so that corrosion alloyance we need to decide and then that corrosion alloyance we will add to the minimum thickness so here whatever we have discussed is uh, mentioned and here i am having a table uh, to have the corrosion alloyance for different cases case 1 says for carbon steel and cast iron pressure part 
For chemical industry where severe conditions are not expected, corrosion allowance of 1.5 mm we consider. Further, if we are considering petroleum or petrochemical industries where severe conditions uh, are expected, severe condition of damage or wastage are expected, in that case we consider 3 mm as the corrosion allowance. Case B is for stainless steel and non-ferrous part, for this case no corrosion allowance will be used because stainless steel have uh, will not have the tendency to form deposit or to uh, have uh, corrosion. Therefore, corrosion allowance is not required when we are preparing the vessel with the stainless steel material and non-ferrous. Uh, Case C is when wall thickness is greater than 30 mm, then corrosion allowance is not required because that 30 mm is sufficient thickness and that is a, a very huge thickness. So, in that case, we do not add corrosion allowance because that thickness is sufficient enough to uh, sustain uh, for longer time. So, in this way, you find out the corrosion allowance. And final terminology we have is the weld joint efficiency factor. So, what is weld joint? When we prepare any uh, vessel, it is prepared with a metal sheet. So, what happens uh, usually metal sheet is basically rolled if I am preparing for cylindrical vessel. Vessel sheet uh, we found in a rectangle form. It is rolled and then we put, then we weld at one point. So, wherever I am welding the metal sheet that joint becomes weaker in comparison to continuous sheet because that joint will face or will go through very high temperature due to welding which makes the material of that joint very weak. So, the ratio of strength of the weld joint to the strength of the plates welded is weld joint efficiency factor. As we have already discussed that uh, wherever welding will occur that material at that particular section or particular location becomes weak in comparison to uh, in comparison to material available in sheet where welding is not done. So, the ratio of these two will be um, defined as joint efficiency factor. Now, before defining this joint efficiency factor, let us have a look on how many types of joints occur in a pressure vessel. So, here you see in this uh, diagram we have the uh, pressure vessel okay, and here we have welded joint location typical for categories A, B, C, D. We have uh, four category uh, and through this category we define different type of connection, different type of welded joints. So, let us start with the first one that is A and it is used for longitudinal welded joint okay, and this is basically the longitudinal welded joint. It means when I roll the sheet and then weld along the length it will be called as longitudinal weld joint and denoted by A. And in this diagram, if you see here A is given, this is wrong, this is not correct. Okay. So, uh, A is this, B is basically defined as the circumferential welded joint. If uh, vessel uh, is, uh, if the length of vessel is very high, we need to prepare the shell or prepare the vessel in 2, 3 connection. So, if I am having one cylinder then to second cylinder we need to add through circumferential joint. So, that will be called as point B. Now, I am having point C where welded joint connecting flanges. This is basically the flange where uh, we cover the um, mouth of the nozzle. Uh, using flange. So, connection of this flange with the nozzle it is uh, called as connection C or joint C and when uh, nozzle is connected to the uh, shell or nozzle is connected to the head you see. So, all these A, B, C, D are different type of connections used in pressure vessel manufacturing. And now, I am having a table which speaks about joint efficiency factor for different conditions. So, if you see this table, here we have class of vessel, class of vessel uh, will be class 1, class 2 and class 3 
and for these classes we have j values in this table and if you see this uh, first column it will speak about different types of welding ok. So, let us consider let let us discuss first different type of welding and then we will discuss different type of classes for vessels. So, first one is double welded but joint with full penetration. So, uh, as far as joint uh, during welding are concerned there are certain standard joint. The first joint is the butt joint. Butt joint means when I am having two metal sheets, I am placing these two metal sheets side by side and I weld it ok. So, this is basically uh, called butt joint when the um, sheets are kept side by side ok. Now, here I am having double welded butt joint with full penetration. So, here side by side I am keeping, here I am uh, welding and from bottom also I am welding and I will ensure that whatever uh, material through welding is uh, uh, depositing over here that should penetrate fully. Next we have the single welded butt joint with backing strip, butt joint is what these two uh, metal plates are uh, uh, kept side by side from one side we weld and from bottom we put a metal strip. So, that we call as the backing strip. Next I am having is single welded butt joint without backing strip. So, that would be butt joint with welding at one side only ok. So, that would be single welded and uh, then we have the single full lap joints. So, lap joint is basically when this is metal sheet, this is metal sheet when we overlap metal sheet slightly and weld from this and weld from this. So, this is basically lap joint this is butt joint, this is lap joint, this is T joint and uh, this is edge joint. In this way different types of joints in welding are defined. Now, what is class 1 vessel? These vessels do contain lethal or toxic substance or to be operated under severe condition. If conditions are very severe we, we go for class 1 vessel and it has fully radiographed joints, minor defects are also not allowed. So, what is the fully radiographed joint uh, that I can make you understand uh, uh, if uh, you consider this as uh, uh, my hand and uh, when I am passing through x-ray from this uh, hand, how you can uh, see the x-ray wherever I am having the bone ok, there I am getting white uh, section, white section will be resembling to the solid part. However, where I am having the uh, mass which is not as solid as bone, there we have some blackish uh, printing ok. So, uh, fully radiographed joint means we make the joint ok and then we pass x and then we pass x ray through this and we see the image if that image will have all white line, it means the joint is fully radiographed. Otherwise, it will have if it is having minor defects or the welding is not done properly, it will show black uh, sections along the welding. So, if that happens, it means it has minor defects. So, for class 1 where minor defects are not allowed, we go for double welded butt joint with backing history with j value point uh, with j value 1 and single welded butt joint with backing strip can also be used where uh, j factor is 0.9. These two joints are not allowed for class 1 and similarly class 2 is used for medium duty operation. Most of the chemical equipments are involved in this category. All longitudinal and circumferential joints are spot radiographed. Spot radiographed means where I am having um, a few um, black spot in x-ray. So, that may be considered with minor defects and thickness should be less than 38 mm. If that is there, uh, j factor for uh, uh, these two joints are given as 0 0.85 and 0 0.8 and then we have class 3 vessel where light duty operation is carrying out and thickness should be less than 16 mm and here we use all type of joints and respective j values are given in this 
table. So, here we have discussed different terminology and these terminology we will further use in designing. And these values of joint efficiency factor you can also see from table 1.1 in code IS2825-1969. I will uh, speak when we solve the problem that how you need to use table B1 or other how you need to choose other terminology that we will discuss when time comes. And here I am having some of the reference books that you can follow for these terminologies and here we have the summary of the video. In this video, in this lecture, terminologies used in mechanical design of equipment are discussed. While designing of equipment, how to select design temperature, design pressure, allowable stress, these are described. Causes of corrosion are briefly discussed and different class of vessels are discussed with respective joint efficiency factor. So, uh, using these four points, I am uh, completing this lecture. So, that is all for now. Thank you.